Hi, I'm Marcus with IndieMusicLab.com. So one of the best ways to make your songs more interesting is by adding textured sounds and textured effects. So instead of your song sounding like this, it can sound more like this. So let's dive in. Here are three ways you can add texture to your productions. Tip number one to add texture to your tracks is to browse through presets and sound banks. Browsing through presets can take some time, especially when you have a really large library, but it is a very easy thing to do. So if you can block out some time, it can be an incredible way to stumble across some sounds that you would never otherwise come across. So when I was producing this song, I could have just used a basic pad, right? That would have sounded more like this. Spotlight, show me the way. I'm losing both my headlights. But I wasn't in the mood for that. I wanted a textured pad or just some type of sound that didn't sound like every other pad out there. I wanted something different that could make this song, even just on that pad level, to sound interesting and to sound different. And that's what led me to stumble across this sound. Spotlight, show me the way, cause I'm losing both my headlights. So the moral of the story is don't always settle for the obvious sound. Take a chance and try to implement something that has maybe a strange tone to it. Maybe it's a little weird, but you have to take these risks because if you don't, you're just going to end up sounding exactly like other artists and it's going to sound vanilla and you don't want to sound vanilla, or at least I hope you don't. Of course, it might take some extra time to do some browsing, but if you can stumble across a sound that is unlike anything you've ever added to your songs in the past, it's so worth it. So browse through the presets and the sound banks that you have in any VSTs that you might own inside your doll and see what you can come across. Okay, tip number two to add texture to your tracks is to use tape and vinyl textures. Now the most simple way of getting this kind of sound would obviously just pull in a, a vinyl loop that you might have whether that's some splice or noise or wherever you get your sample packs and your samples, and that can work great. But what's even better, at least in my opinion, is a plugin like RC20 by XLN Audio. Now, if you don't own RC20, here's a free plugin that I recommend you get, and it is the Noise Filter. Now, Noise, much like Splice, is where I get all my sample packs and my samples and my loops. But they're not only a sample pack library, they also have virtual instruments and plugins. And one plugin in particular is a simple filter plugin, but there's a feature within this plugin where you can add texture. Not only can you add vinyl texture, you can add, they have like 20 to 30 different options to choose from, and you can blend that in with the dry signal. So it's almost like a dry wet knob that you would get on a mix knob. So I highly recommend you download that if you don't own RC20 and you want something that accomplishes at least a similar type sound. I'll leave a link in the description to the Noise website where you can check out all the other things that they have going on there. All right, now before we get to the home stretch and wrap this video up, I wanna let you know about a free gift I have for you. It's called the five steps to a Spotify level production. This is a mini ebook of sorts where I just walk you through the five steps, the five phases to take your song from nothing to a Spotify level production value, which to me, that means having the quality of being a natural fit within a curated Spotify playlist. The link is in the description. I think it's really gonna help you out to take your next song to the next level. So go check that out. All right, let's move on to tip number three. All right, tip number three to add texture to your tracks is to chop up loops and samples. Now, there are so many sample packs out there that have incredible textured loops and samples in them. So similar to the first tip where you browse through presets and sound banks, it's the same kind of idea. And this is so powerful and this is why making music is easier than it's ever been is it's almost like you have multiple people in the studio with you just giving you these samples, giving you these loops to play around with. It's an incredible luxury and you and I need to be taking advantage of that. There's no reason not to. So one thing you could do is drag a textured loop or sample into your sampler and then implement that into the drum groove. Find a way to 
mesh it together with the drums that you already have or the percussion that you already have and find a way to make it fit in that context. Or to make it even simpler, you could just drag the loop straight into the timeline and then just chop it up and put bits and pieces at the places where you feel they best fit. That's exactly what I did with a textured loop in this song. Listen. All right, thanks so much for watching. I really hope it was helpful. Now, if you've been procrastinating and you need a plan and you need a kick in the butt to get your next song started, then I've got something that is really gonna help you out. Like I mentioned earlier, the five steps to a Spotify level production. Link is in the description. It's absolutely free. So be sure to check that out and go make incredible music. Thanks so much for watching. Happy music making. See ya.